Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today, I wanted to channel and I've been, I've had a few Inspirations isn't the right word, but if a pull toward ever since January 2021 to speak to a few individuals that are connected with and through the afterlife because of their experiences with the Holocaust and during World War II with the genocide. And I struggle with this a bit in the introduction because I want to be sh sure that I'm very respectful and I already recognize, I know that there's a different word to use for the Holocaust, but here for me as an American who didn't live through that era, I was born many years after, uh, that's how I learned about the history, the horrible history where millions lost their lives. And I wanted to bring forward the connection with some poignant figures of the time who can share their stories and be a voice for them. Wasn't sure which one, there were three I had in mind. And the three are Anne Frank, Victor Frankel, and Oscar Schindler. And as I sat down and I wrote the three names and I began to write the three names in my notebook today for channeling, I stopped at Victor Frankel, Dr. Frankel. So I'm gonna share with you that I don't really have a lot of background with um, Dr. Frankel and his work. I know he was like a psychiatrist. I believe he was a psychiatrist, psychologist, psychiatrist. He was in psychology. He was very well known and very smart and very highly um, intelligent, well respected, and that he's written books and things and lectures and, and has a whole kind of foundation of one of the psychology kind of tenants based upon his work. And I know he survived the Nazi con concentration camps and, and experienced or endured horrific experiments. And <clears throat> that's what I know about him. Mm -hmm. So here we go. <laughs> With deep respect for the memory of those who've suffered and been lost, honoring. Whenever you tap into, as a medium, whenever I tap into a transitioning of a shared collective suffering experience like this, and this particularly this very violent persecution and torture, death, extermination, I have huge groups, mass groups that, that now their ancestors of those who suffered during that time, who were born during that time, the children, the families who are my age and older and younger, they all plug in, there's a grid and they're all plugged in in some way they're connected to that. And so I'm really sensitive to that. And, and, and I just really wanna share that I feel that. I myself, I'm not Jewish and I, I just feel as an empath, so much of the, <clears throat> I recognize my role here and how important it is right now. Dr. Frankel, hello, oh he, you guys, I always describe to my viewers how uh, my guests look in the afterlife and so allow me to do that please. He, he comes to give me, a, I, I was going to handshake and he comes to give me a little, a little bit of a hug and he's shorter than I am, I'm five, almost 5'9", and he feels shorter in stature, and yet has this incredible light, and it's in his heart, and it's yellow. And so when I see the yellow energy glowing in your heart space, that solar plexus spirit, that's purpose. 
That's the spirit of me is in my heart. The spirit of me is in my heart and I feel that. I really want to just cry <laughs> meeting you. I am so moved personally and touched by the incredible endurance and belief in higher power or in, in the meaning of life through understanding some of the stories and hearing some of the stories of the witnesses and the families who are now telling these stories generations on real life experiences that are shared and passed along from generation to generation. I am so just humbled by the power of the human spirit to survive. And not only survive, but th thrive and you carry on and, and your legacy and and it just, I'm recording this just shy of the ending of January in 2021. And I feel this tremendous growth opportunity. And I feel you imbuing this energy and you feel so grounded and very earth and very humanity. And the feeling that I get from you is very empathic and it's transferring through the heart space. And the message is clearly everyone, don't give up. No matter how bad it seems, no matter how bad your life may be and the struggles you face, don't give up on life. Because when you do that, you give up on you. Then all that you've lived up to this point is for nothing. Oh my gosh, he's. Now, do you feel the message coming in? <clears throat> right into the heart. Grounded energy, I see red, which is like root chakra connecting us in. Feeling of life, pure life. Would love for you to share wisdom with us. Life lessons. Messages for us. Humans, we're trying to exist and we think our lives are hard. And Whatever we think is our reality, as we've clearly seen here in the United States, we've had a lot of turbulence in other parts of the world, the United Kingdom and other areas and other continents. There's been struggles and political struggles and, and ideal struggles and total separation and segregation of different parts of society. And, and, and there's dangerous, dangerous rhetoric and words and, and things. And it just breaks my heart to know that you... And so many like you went through what you did so that we wouldn't have to be in this place of suffering. Oh my gosh, I'm going to cry through this whole thing or try not to cry. But I'm human, but I have a heart, you guys. I'm <laughs> not just a medium. I really feel humbled by your presence. And I just want to say, forgive us. Please forgive us. Forgive us for screwing it up somehow, for not. What advice can you give us? What messages of hope can you give us? It's about the healing. He's reaching out to like touch my hand. He says, it's about the healing. Don't look at me and see a survivor. Look at me and see a man a person, a contributor to society. As I see you, I look at you and I see potential. Oh, thank you, he says that. That's you, all of us, that's all of us. Oh my gosh. The words of encouragement are not what is needed here. The truth of a life and the value of one is what you have learned. That's what everyone has learned. Everyone has the opportunity to know this. Some will not take it for fear. It goes against their own learning up to this point. For you to judge them for that, you're judging them against something that they have no control until the moment 
when they are given the opportunity face to face with someone and the manner in which they treat them. They speak to them in the manner in which they connect with them human to human. That's the moment. It will define you. And you will have many opportunities for forgiveness, for forgiveness in your lifetime, I assure you. It is best to learn it early on. My wife and children. And I do not live with regret. I, blessed with family, have multiple, oh God, he says multiple times or multiple ways. No, he says, no, don't turn your, don't turn your head from the brutality. It is part of the human experience. Man is cruel to man. There are no excuses. There, there are no understandings here. There's, there's no way to comprehend this sort of brutality and the need for such a survival instinct within you. It does transcend the mind. It must transcend the mind. The experiences that I've had and others have had just like me are no different in that we must transcend the mind in order to ultimately ultimately live. In many forms, this may appear to be a sacrifice of self, of oneself, and yes, it is over and over and over again, giving up dignity and all, any type of what you would deem as normal, all morality, perhaps, as well. But yet, there are moments and in these quiet moments, you can know yourself, remind yourself of who you are, and remember why you came, why you are in a body, a soul that has so much to share and to give and to be. It's not a desire or a, a grand mission or vision that that drives me. It's the connection to humanity. It's the connection. That is where the real hope is. It is, it is there in the connection. Oh, wow. The world is struggling, Dr. Frankel, in many, many ways, and with health, with health, a health crisis, and with political crises. For those who feel confused or lost or like they're not sure of their meaning anymore, of their life, their individual life, what would you say to them? And don't give up. To give up is to not value what has brought you here. Even if that road has been filled with pain and horrors, struggles, you have made it to this point this point in time, and every point is one point in time. Where you may discover yourself, you may choose something that can change everything. I would
not to be perhaps the best to encourage others to encourage you. Because I don't walk the path you walk. I cannot compare my journey. One person's lifetime cannot be compared adequately to another. It, it does not. It does not adequately compare. To do that is, is there's no value in that. It doesn't, it doesn't it make sense to do that. Dr. Frankel, can I ask you, like from an afterlife perspective, because you know that I'm a psychic and I'm a medium and I connect with the afterlife, and as soon as I say that, I can feel that just tremendous, tremendous rush. The tears are natural, you guys. Like, it's okay if you cry when you hear sad things. It's, it's, it's a release. It's an opportunity for healing. It's a touching moment of connection. As a medium, when I connect to that time, not just through my own personal like past life experiences, but through knowing that you have had such an impact, your human life. And now I'm in the afterlife, I get this feeling that you're such a teacher and that you probably travel around and chat with a lot of people <laughs> about this, about the information. At least we not forget. Can we talk about the afterlife? Are you okay talking about that? I mean, I, I don't want to res- I don't want to disrespect the body of work that you've shared and that you lived and you and you left as a legacy for us all, but oh yes. Oh yes, quite a quite all right. Quite yes, yes. Okay. I don't know a lot about your life historically or your family, but I feel like there's I feel this energy of like Poland, then I see like the Netherlands. Um I feel, oh gosh, I hit in the solar plexus. My stomach just really hurts right now. Just like I feel this uh, punch in the gut feeling almost, not physically hurts, but emotionally, energetically. The afterlife. So when we connect into the energy, when, when students are learning about World War II and they're learning about the genocide, they're learning about the murders of hundreds and thousands and millions of Jews, women, child and children, women, children, men, people who, who helped, who tried to stand up and have a say against. <clears throat> Germany during that time. Can we talk about that? I, I can feel when when we watch like a video clip or when students read a book or when we see the Holocaust Remembrance Day or see the, or, or some that actually travel to like Auschwitz, Birkenau or, oh gosh, oh my gosh, just feeling that I can't even imagine. Oh, I just, I can't imagine the afterlife feeling into that I feel so many souls oh my god oh my god I can't even oh uh, clearly I'm not the kind of psychic or I'm not in a state as a medium where I can just disconnect from the people I'm channeling which is why I probably haven't channeled for some time Right now, where we're at in January 2021, into the year of 2021, we are here on the and the with the incredible challenge of a health crisis, and there have been many that have crossed from that. At least in the United States, over 400,000 at this point, 400,000 dead. Nothing like the Holocaust, nothing like the genocide, nothing like the murders in in Germany during World War II and all around Europe there because of the prejudice, the the targeting and scapegoating of Jews during World War II by Germany. There's so many collectively on the other side that have suffered from the same fate Can you share with us in the afterlife how that is for those who lost their lives 
during that time they transition and they're in the afterlife what I mean when you years later when you went to, to the afterlife did you see them is there a place for all of these people who were killed and and during World War II specifically the Jewish population and those who who really tried to help them and help stay something and save people's lives that grouping of people is there like a place where they all connect they're connected and then are they reincarnated or how does this I mean what is this when there's something this tragic and there's such a mass death like we're experiencing now because of this health crisis mass death like what happens with these souls because as a medium I've had a really hard time even trying to channel or connect because of all of the energies of all of the people in the afterlife and how all of their lives are meaningful regardless of what kind of health issues they had what age they are where they lived whatever okay their life is life has value please help me to understand this from the afterlife perspective oh, he says why do you share the pain you don't have to share the pain my dear what he says this is an example of how you as humans misunderstand when you're in a human body it is natural to use the human emotions to connect to to make con connection to make conversation through the emotional he says realm, the emotional realm. That's interesting. I haven't heard it said that before. Thank you, Dr. Franco. The emotional realm. We're making connection through the emotional realm. The heart energy, right? The empath. And that is through the pain more so than the love. It's so easy to connect with pain. This is a human trait that I have yet to truly understand. The connection to the pain. The pain is easy to hold on to, but the love, it is more difficult. It's more, it's something that feels so obscure, abstract. In part, that's, that's because the mind informs you in your experience. And, and it does make sense. There is a need for that to identify. And it's the heart that seeks for you to be free. And the feeling of this, when it starts with that pain, the empathy comes. And the compassion is beneath that. And that is how relationship grows and how the understanding takes place. It blooms within you. It seeds. Oh my God, that's beautiful. <laughs> it seeds our pain that we feel is like is is are the seeds that bloom into compassion that support us i feel like for me that shadowy part though is like i'm afraid that the pain will be overwhelming i'm afraid that i could have been a bad person during those times too like what if i was so afraid that i wanted to protect my children that i I said no to helping another family with their children. What if I did that? What if, I don't know what I would do if that was a situation. I'd like to believe that I would stand up and, and help, quietly help, or be part of some kind of a, he smiles and he says, you know, a revolution or an underground, hmm, perhaps. Does that sound familiar to you, Bridget? <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> Yes, it does. Does that sound familiar to you? Now you're talking a little bit about past lives, and I really want to stick on this whole understanding of how we get so emotional and feel so deeply, many of us. And, and, and let's be honest here. Let's be really forthright. Many people will, not many, I won't say many. Mm -mm, there's not many. Some people will reject, outright reject, violent, murderous, horrific tragic experiences like this like a holocaust like genocide 
because it's just too much for them to process, I think. I think I'd like to believe that people reject the notion of it because they just can't believe it, it's too much to process, and if they believed it, they literally would just, like their head and their heart would just explode, is how it feels. They would lose their minds because they couldn't believe, couldn't let themselves believe that man could be that cruel to man, or that there could be so much desire, hunger for power, that it would overwhelm the depth of humanity as a, uh, a culture as a whole, humanity as a culture. If humanity is a culture and then everything else is subcultures, humanity as a whole could have that kind of persu persuasion of control and power and, and manipulation by manipulation by targeting out a group and making them bad or, or creating a story around this group that will help everybody else come together around this enemy and and then they have agreement around this enemy until that there's another facet gets pulled out and that's the enemy. Now there's a new enemy. Now it's you, you know, that kind of thing. From the afterlife perspective, us feeling into that and having this acceptance or rejection of that, the, his, the history. What is that? How is that related with the afterlife? There are masses, he's saying, there are masses, there are mass groups that collectives of energy, in your, your words, collectives of energy, mass groups, that just as the mass graves that you've seen depicted in documentaries and, and video or imagery, there are masses that hold a part of the history so that the light will always be eternal. It is not what you might see though, what you might think with your mind it is. It's not about forgetting with the mind, it's about understanding the depth, the raw depth of human sacrifice. And in turn understanding forgiveness. The process of healing is both these things, understanding the human sacrifice and experiencing the process of forgiveness, forgiving. If you could know these two things from the afterlife, you could have such a, such a much more blessed life because of your presence. You could forgive yourself for being human. Human beings are not without flaws. There can be a, a tip in the power within an individual focused much more intellectually, not in philosophical terms, pondering the questions of the universe perhaps, but in the darkness, in isolation, in a strongly held belief based upon the rejection of something that is far too much for them to, to know, to, to process, to accept. This is how most of those types of experiences do happen. And it's not in, in groups really affecting the groups as you see, it's the groups in the afterlife are holding the light. You would describe this as hope but it is about understanding the human suffering. The sacrifice that has already been made that you connect to within your own life and your own experience of sacrifice and imbued with the suffering, that energy creates such an emotion for you to help shift, to upset things that you've put in place for your comfort to, yes, challenge you in ways that will create opportunities for you to forgive others and yourself. In these ways, you learn and we all grow. So yes, many of these peoples have chosen to come back again and many in the same families. You will find, if you did a study, that many are reincarnated into the same lineages your word, your same ancestral, the same families and generations, whether they be great-great-grandchildren, 
daughters, nieces, cousins, sons, many, many have chosen to come back. And through that, they bring with them in the incarnation, they bring with them that cell memory, that memory, I want to say cellular memory, but that, that, that incredible feeling, they embody the feeling of knowledge and they know better than behavior. They know more than behavior. They know more than this that is here and now. They know because the understanding of the history is integrated inside of them and all of this understanding of the human struggles, the suffering, the choices that had to be made, the regrets that many had, the desire for just life, just one more day, how precious it, it became. These new souls are old souls and they understand. And by the way, they do not have to be born into the same family, but they may come in through a, a husband or a wife, a marriage, something like that. And they don't have to take on the exact same, like he's saying, the same characteristics. They don't have to look like the person. They don't have to be the same religion. They don't have to live in the same part of the world, but they're part of that family. They could be way extended family, but they're in, they're, they're here again. And they have all this knowledge. They just have it. Not intellect, not like in the brain, like just embody, they embody this. And so you can tell them by the light in their heart. He says, Bridget, look for the heart and you will see the candle. And literally like when I saw Victor Frankel, Dr. Frankel for the, the first time here, like in the channeling, saw you, I saw this like candle, this tall candle, just pillar candle, like with a little, little tray and it was gold. And then around it is white, like a halo of light, just light halo with gold in the center. And that's like purpose spirit in the heart the spirit is in the heart and you will see that because they have that understanding of suffering they have that and yet they also know that forgiveness oh my goodness forgiveness is part of the path for enlightenment for um he says um the path for advancement for humanity enlightenment is kind of a buddha Buddhist term, or spiritual term, but he says for the advancement of humanity, for the collective growth. He keeps coming back to the words growth, the words forgiveness, um, sacrifice and suffering, these things. So if we can, you and I in the audience here, as we're talking to Dr. Victor Frankel, thank you, doctor from the afterlife, use those words and really feel into them as medicine as as arrows or markers to emotions that will provide us freedom so that we can grow and expand and without external influence from you know the television the media the the hate groups or the the um fear that we have maybe for over our health concerns and that kind of a thing because those things are all um, fueled by our fear and our feeling of, of inability or less than our, our capacity. When we question, our, we diminish our own capacity. When we, when we look outside of ourselves to seek expert advice or advisement, guidance, instead of trusting our own instincts while we're having conversations that are at a level of, um, of support. If it feels like somebody's trying to convince you, then they are, and that's about control. And you gotta be aware of those warning signs. If somebody's trying to control the conversation or they're not willing to hear you, they may be in a place where they can't. There's no need to engage or convince anyone because it's not what's gonna happen. That's not gonna happen, you guys. So the words, these are not pretty words, but this is the shadow, part of the shadow work stuff that I've been personally working on too and being willing to go into the places where Life isn't always roses and cherries, so if I can be really kind to myself and embrace the parts of myself that I feel are inadequate or less than or not capable, the things that I don't think are skills, they're flaws, I, the more I can really be whole because I can love myself and fulfill my destiny and, and have a greater life, a happier life, a more fulfilled life, a more loving life if I'm loving these parts of myself so that, I, that I think maybe aren't so great. So I invite you to acknowledge these words that Dr. Frankel brought forward of 
Where are you sacrificing? What are you sacrificing? Where in your life are you sacrificing? And what are you sacrificing? If you don't have a journal handy, when you come back, come back to this part of the video and, and watch it, okay? Then secondly, suffering. Where in your life are you suffering without point, without purpose, without need to suffer? You are not living the life right here, right now of a slave, of a, a, a Jewish person, a Nazi control or Nazi um, confinement, okay? You're not, right? You're not either one of those two things. Then how are you suffering at your own creation based upon what you're connected to? Because you would never cause yourself pain or harm intentionally unless there was a greater purpose reason, something that was coming from outside of you and affecting you in that way to create deep suffering. Like it's normal to struggle. It's normal to have challenging times and low feeling days and low moods and anger and have experiences based on the experiences you've had and ways you've been treated. It's normal to have all these emotions, but suffering is like long-term commitment to feeling miserable, misery. And all of these people who have died and lost their lives in these horrific, horrific po points in history, like with the Holocaust, like with the health crisis that we're experiencing right now, you don't have to be one of those. You are not one of those. Be here, be now, and acknowledge how am I suffering? How am I creating suffering for myself? It's like a cycle, okay? So consider the word suffering. How do you feel that you are suffering? That's really deep. I would super duper encourage you to make sure if you're talking to a counselor, talk to them if stuff comes up for you here. If this feels too deep for you, don't go there. Don't go there. You know yourself, don't go there. Maybe, maybe it's not the time for you to deal with that. So let's skip to the next one, forgiveness. This is, these are huge. This is like a psychology class, like a, I'm not a counselor, Dr. Victor Frankel. <laughs> but these are important pieces. He's bringing these in. Forgiveness, how can I forgive myself? How can I start to let go of some of the things I blame myself for, I feel shame for, I feel guilt for. Guilt and shame, opportunities for forgiveness. Usually it's coming from some experience that you had, total misunderstanding on your part or internalization on your part of something that you are in a place where forgiveness is gonna open up the flow for freedom of your emotions because your emotional freedom is gonna be key here. Emotional freedom is gonna be the way that we save humanity. If you wanna think of it that way, it's true. It's gonna make your lives better by making your relationships better, by making you you feel more whole because you will be, because you'll be accepting parts of yourself. You'll forgive yourself for what you didn't know when, you know, when you were 18 and you made stupid choices and you ended up in wherever you ended up and maybe did some bad, bad things and hurt people. You're not that person anymore. You didn't know back then. Now you know different things. You have the gift of time to look back and reflect and you can forgive yourself now. It's time to do that. It's time to do that. If you want emotional freedom, that is. Okay, so sacrifice, suffering, and forgiveness. What can you forgive yourself for? Right here, right now, what can you forgive yourself for? Hmm? Forgiving doesn't mean that you admit or accept, I'm bad, so I need forgiveness. I have sinned, I've done wrong, so I need forgiveness. We gotta connect with the energy of what forgiveness is as a spiritual tool, as an energetic tool to free some energy so we can move and not feel held back. You wanna know what's holding you back? This is what's holding you back. You are holding you back. Your suffering, your overly sacrifice, energy of sacrifice may be connected to other lifetimes or this lifetime and the inability to forgive. Now, you really are able to forgive, but you're not choosing to. 
So you have to work on your relationship with the concept of forgiveness and explore what this word means. What does this feel like to you? What does it look like to you? Because it's not just connected to one thing you did bad or one part of you that's not good. It's connected to a feeling. It's connected to a flow state. It's connected to a value system, belief system. It's different than what you think it is. So explore that. Let's explore that deeper. Go deeper into that. And the goal is growth. To grow. To understand this life as a gift. The preciousness of the moment. To grow. Mm. To grow in to the dream of those who can't be here to dream right now. That sounds like a big responsibility, but it is. And you can do it. I believe in you. I believe in us. We can do it. I believe in us. I'd encourage you as always to get the assistance of others, trusted friends or family and Mental health care workers, you guys, they're so underrated. I myself right now have a co great counselor, had for years, love her, just had actually had a session today with her. And just to check in, you know, keep, keep healthy, keep the dialogue flowing, things you can't talk with your family with and talk out things you're feeling and thoughts you're having and things without setting up red bells, red alarms for your family, just having real conversation. Total neutral third party, so a counselor, which could be a, a social worker, licensed clinical social worker, a psychiatrist or a psychologist, whoever, okay, counseling. And maybe a life coach, like I have a life coach also. I have a couple actually, three that I would work with from time to time. One that I'm working with right now on relationships for me personally and um, my like family relationships, me as a mother and with my kids. And then I have a coach that is a sort of a quasi, well, she's kind of a healer and a divine feminine coach-like guide. I don't know how to explain her, but um, I work with her when I need to, especially like during certain times of the year, I feel like I really want that deeper, rooted, grounded connection to myself as a spirit, as a highly evolved spirit, so I work with her. So you might work with somebody like me, you might work with somebody like that, you might work with a healer. I also have a clear, I just had a clearing session last week. Um, with a dear healer, clear friend of mine that was able to help clear some things for me energetically with remote healing. And so I can't recommend enough support. You've got to build your own web of support because nobody's riding in on a white horse to save you. That's not here. Okay, that's not really here right now. That's not how this works this lifetime. Maybe past lifetimes that worked, you know. It's very romantic, yes, but it, it's not going to work now. In 2021, it's not going to work right now for that. You've got to build a web of support. You've got to be willing to ask for help. You've got to be willing to explore some of these things about sacrifice and suffering and how you're holding yourself back because of that and not punishing yourself, just acknowledging where, hey, I can loosen this up. Hey, I can loosen that up. Hey, I can let go of some of this stuff. For me, oh my gosh, I had no idea that I was blaming myself for my divorce, kind of the thing. I was blaming myself. Oh my gosh, I was blaming me. And not, it wasn't my deal, but I was blaming me. And as soon as I loosened some of that stuff up, oh my gosh, I feel so much better. So to again, you feel better when you Forgive yourself, right? So forgiveness, new relationship with forgiveness. It's not a yes, no thing, a one-time event. It's a flow of energy, forgiveness is. So thank you to my afterlife guest, Dr. Victor Frankel. It was really tough for me to get through this. I hope that it really benefits those of you who are watching. I hope it was respectful. Please know that I mean that. I mean to be. And I wish you nothing but... Um, love and understanding and kindness and compassion with yourself when you have these kinds of experience. I recognize 100% that many of you will, will acknowledge or feel or remember, have remembered, maybe even right now up to this point, past lives during that time. And so the goal is not to, to trigger any kind of uh, trauma or memory of trauma. It is to release and clear from an emotional state from the person you are today. Not You don't have to relive or remember your trauma in order to clear the residual effects or imprints on your heart space. It's about emotional freedom, as Viktor Frankl's conversation with us today is really about emotional freedom. I want that for you. And you and I, we deserve that. This is Bridget. Thanks so much for watching this very long video here on Above Life channel on YouTube. It's my pleasure to be able to 
bring you videos, conversations that inspire your spirit, the spirit of us. Mm. And this is your life now. This one right here right now is yours, not the past life. This is yours. This life is yours here and now. Own it. Own it. Live it. Please live it. Just live it. Thanks for being here. Be sure to subscribe to the channel so you never miss a new video. Find me on Instagram at Bridget Inspired, on Facebook at Bridget Inspired, and also Above Life Channel on Facebook if you're interested in finding me on my other work space. I actually have a vlogging channel, an intuitive coach-like channel, Fairy Grasshopper on YouTube. That's Fairy Grasshopper on YouTube.